Hello, welcome to Jackrabbit Journal. We are down to the wire now in men's and women's basketball. Just four games left in the regular season for the women. Just three left for the SDSU men. And Scott Nagy's team just played one of its best games of the season, picked up one of its biggest wins of the season in a great game against North Dakota State. Saturday in Brookings, 5,000 fans at Frost Arena to see South Dakota State and North Dakota State go at it for first place in the Summit League. Lawrence Alexander making threes for the Bison. George Marshall coming back, making threes for the Jackrabbits. Cody Larson fighting for offensive rebounds and throwing them back in the bucket. A Reed telling Hughes in three-pointer. And another jumper by Marshall and the Jacks lead 29 to 24 at halftime. A three by Jake Biddle, and it's a one-point game midway through the second half. A North Dakota State three, and the Bison have the lead with eight minutes to play. But a four-point play by DeAndre Parks, followed by two more threes by Parks, and the Jacks pull away and win it by 10. It was a great game, fun game to watch, but hard to appreciate in the moment when you're the head coach. It never goes through my mind that it's that this is a great game and this is fun for me. I mean, it's you know pretty focused on uh, you know trying to keep the guys encouraged. You know, like uh, uh, with, with 7:50 to go, there we're we're down three at that timeout, and uh, you know you can see the guys, the frustration in the guys' faces. You know, and just trying to encourage them and and. You know, just remind them these, this is this is why we've done all the hard work right here. I mean, some you know we're playing at home. Somebody's got to make some plays for us, and then DeAndre went out and made some plays for us. He had a, a, a tough first half. Obviously, didn't score, and uh, you know they had they had Dupree on him, who, who was probably their best guard defender. And he, you know he got he got uh, DeAndre shut down, and then they put Dupree on George in the second half because George was going, and then uh, DeAndre got free for some shots. Well, it was Marshall who carried the Jacks through the first half. He made six of eight shots and scored 14 points and looked like he had a little extra bounce going into this game, although Nagy says you would never know if Marshall was a little more jacked up than usual. George is pretty low-key. I mean, like uh, sometimes I wonder if he even has a pulse. I'm just checking it. He, he, he's really low-key, quiet guy, doesn't say a whole lot, but he's a good player. Well, speaking of good players, Lawrence Alexander will probably be the player of the year in the Summit League and he had 24 points against the Jacks on Saturday, but took 20 shots to do it. And all in all, the Jacks did what they could against a great player. For the most part, we kept him off the free throw line. You know, I, at Denver, he shot 11 free throws. You don't want to put him on the free throw line that much. That's how scores really score. Uh, you know, and if, 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 if he's going to score 24 points, we want him to take 20 shots. And so, you know, I mean, if a guy's going to take 20 shots, he's probably going to get that many points. Well, senior center Cody Larson tied his Summit League season high with 12 rebounds in this game, also scored 11 points against a number of different defensive looks from the Bison. Early they trapped him, and then, and then probably the first 10 possessions they were, they were trapping him, and after that they were pretty much one-on-one -on -one with, with just hard digs, you know, very, very tight defense when it went in. Uh, he, Cody did a good job, you know. I mean, he was a little frustrated because it's, it's so crowded in there, but... Uh, what I was pleased with were his 12 rebounds. And three of those were offensive rebounds for Larson. And the Jacks grabbed a Summit League season high 14 offensive rebounds in all. It's not like we, we preached any more about it this week than we did. Uh, but, you know, we, we have just talked about this. It's, it's, there are two things that, that we've not done real well. And one of them is take care of the basketball. And we haven't been terrible at turning it over, but we haven't been great either. Uh, and then the other thing is, is we've just not been a very good rebounding team, either on the offensive or defensive end, and, and we did both of those in this game. I think offensive rebound comes from energy, and, and uh, you know when you're flat, guys are just standing around. But, but when you have good energy, you're flying at the basket when shots go up. And we had good energy the whole game. I mean, 14 offensive rebounds uh, against them is, is, you know, I, I mean, it tells you our kids are playing hard and are focused. All right, so the Jacks and the Bison are tied for first in the Summit League right now. Nagy doesn't want to hear anything about tiebreakers or conference championships right now. Uh, more on that coming up later. Nate Walters was back in Brookings for the North Dakota State game. He's in his second season in the NBA, but without a team right now, that could change this week. The trade deadline is this week. We'll see if something happens uh, for Walters after all of that shakes out. Speaking of celebrated SDSU athletes, Zach Zenner is getting ready for the NFL Combine this week. He's got his workout on the field on Saturday. There's an analysis of Zenner on the Combine website. It's pretty interesting. It says the bottom line is his production, his size, and his speed will generate plenty of discussion in draft meetings. The NFL draft, by the way, is coming up. It starts on April 30th. 
When we come back, though, back to basketball. And one of the smartest guys on the Jackrabbit men's team, they call him Doc Moff. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back. Keaton Moffitt is a very good basketball player. He's also a great student and a really good interview. And here is David Brown with Moffitt in the Rabbit Fire interview. Do you know why you were named Keaton? Um, my mom told me I was named after Buster Keaton, and that's really all I know about that. Buster Keaton. It's a, yeah, it's a unique name. Of it's course. a unique Michael name. Michael Keaton is yeah. doing well for yeah, he's doing this well year. for himself. Diane Keaton. I, that those are about the only three that I know. So I've only met one other Keaton in my life too. So and he was like a first grader. So I was pretty happy about that seeing him. <laughs> so you're glad you have a unique name. Yeah, I like I like it. All right, you're a pharmacy major. Who is the smartest player from a student perspective on the team? Um. I would probably say myself, <laughs> but yeah. Pharmacy major, you would expect that. So who's the smartest from a basketball state? Basketball, um, I think I think I'll probably say Zach Horseman. He's been around a long time, and he, just as far as he knows what we're trying to do on the court, and I think, um, yeah, I think he's probably the smartest from a basketball state. All right, grew up in Sioux Falls, went to O'Gorman. What's the best restaurant in Sioux Falls? Best restaurant, I'd say Hoo Hot. Uh, yeah, I'm all about the mind going grill. What is your favorite TV show? Uh, Parks and Recreation. I love uh, Ron Swanson, and I just love Parks and Rec. Do you follow his pyramid of success? I do, yeah, <laughs> try. <laughs> Why are you number 12? Number 12, um, that just kind of happened. I, I'm no real reason why I'm number 12. I was number two at the beginning of the year. They didn't have number two uh, as a jersey. We only had it as a practice jersey, so I moved to Braden's number. No, not superstitious with your numbers? You'll just play in whatever? Yeah, I pretty much played in a different number every year I've played. Who is the smelliest teammate? Um, <laughs> I'm going to say old Ian over here. <laughs> And why is that? I don't know. He, I, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it could be Connor or Ian, one of the two, but I don't really know. They just, they just have their own smell. <laughs> What's the best nickname you've ever had? Um, a lot of the guys in the uh, locker room call me Doc Moth, and I think it's just because I'm a pharmacy major, and they all think that I take really hard classes, and so that's what they call me. Kind of goes with Doc Ock from Spider-Man. Exactly, I yeah. I, so I, I don't know. I think it sounds cool. In your short time here, what's your favorite Coach Nagy story? A funny story, a silly story? Funny story. Um, I remember this one time out. Uh, um, it, was, it was just a couple games ago, actually. Uh, he was yelling at Jake, and uh, Jake just said, out of nowhere, just like stands up and goes, I know! Like he, like, he knew exactly what Coach Nagy was talking about, and he just didn't want to be yelled at anymore. And I just started laughing about it. <laughs> See, a lot of guys say when he's mad and stomp his feet, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can hear it, like, he be shooting a free throw, and if you miss or something, you, you'll hear him stomp his foot, and you know that, yeah, you did, you should have made that shot. <laughs> then last question, who would win a horse contest between you and the rest of your teammates? Uh... I think Anders, uh, Anders is a pretty, pretty good shooter. Him or Corey, it would be tough to beat, of course. Is it just the unique shots that they can do, they got range, or? Well, it's just like the consistency. They, like, you can set them up there and they go 10 for 10 from the top of the uh, uh, three-point line. So, yeah, I think they would be the best. All right, you're done, thanks for playing. Yeah, thank you. Up next, the Jackrabbit women working through some injuries and trying to put it all together as the Coyotes come to town this weekend. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com.
Well, the Jackrabbit women's basketball team split two games over the weekend. China Stevens is still out with a foot injury. Megan Watashik did come back and play in the second game of the road trip as the Jacks won at Oral Roberts, but she did not play as the Jacks took a tough loss at Denver. Having a full roster is always helpful. I think everybody realizes that, but we still had enough talent and enough ability on the floor to come away with a win. We just didn't play well offensively. We missed a bunch of shots. We had close to 18 possessions where we had shots inside of four feet and just didn't make them, didn't score. Uh, and some of those possessions were multiple shots and just couldn't get them to go down. Even with that being said, it's a tight game. We're up by five midway through the second half. They go on a 16-0 run. We just couldn't recover. And that was a function of, again, us not scoring during that stretch, getting those good shots. And then defensively, that's probably the one stretch where we had some lapses. A couple of them were in transition. Gave up two threes back to back where they took the lead, another one a little bit later. And just couldn't get a stop when our offense wasn't clicking. So ultimately we didn't play well enough to win and, and that's happened a few times this year on the road. So we have to figure that out here. We've got another big one coming up on Wednesday. But uh, it was a disappointing loss for sure. Well, it wasn't a lack of effort or a lack of chances. The Jacks had 19 offensive rebounds, second most of the season. And they also had 73 shots, 15 more than Denver, but just could not get enough of them to go down. 73 field goal attempts, you get that many shots, and again, they're all point blank. It wasn't like we were just missing jump shots. Uh, we made free throws. Uh, for the most part, defense was good, again, except for about a five-minute stretch there in the second half. Uh, so just a little bit of a lapse, and, and we just didn't get it done. There's really no good reason for it. We, we just need to learn to play better. We bounced back and did a nice job at Oral Roberts, but you know every game is important, and uh, we've just been a little inconsistent on the road here so far. Well, we got it right on Friday at Oral Roberts. Shots that didn't go in at Denver did go in in this one. The Jacks shoot 56% in the first half. They lead by 13 points at halftime and win by 14. Six foot seven center Vicky McIntyre had 27 points, but nobody else scored more than eight for Oral Roberts. That game defensively, we finally played really well. We played a little bit of man, played actually quite a bit of zone too. They're great at putting it on the floor and getting to the basket. We just felt like that maybe took some of their perimeter players out of the mix. Uh, we didn't let them get to the free throw line either, which was a big part of what they do at home. And McIntyre's going to score, so we did a good job, I think, of making her take some mid-range, somewhat contested jump shots rather than layups at the rim. Our zone did a nice job with that. Then we were able to pull her away from the basket some. Our, our, our players, Clarissa for instance, hit a, hit a three, Ellie hit a three when she was on her. Just pulled her away from the basket enough to give ourselves a chance to, to get some other inside shots, which we made. Megan Watashik returned to the lineup after missing one game with an injury, and she had 10 points, seven rebounds in 31 minutes. I don't know if she's quite 100%. She's in pain, but it's not an injury that's gonna get worse or gonna have any lingering effects. It's just how she can manage the pain. It was nice she had a weekend off here, Saturday, Sunday, maybe to get some rehab in and try and get healthy. Um, she just brings a level of toughness on the floor. She brings a defensive presence at 6'2 when she plays a three. That's a long wing player for other perimeter players to score over. She rebounds really well. She just brings a certain toughness and a calmness to our team with her presence. So she was a big help to us. Well, another big help, uh, two of them actually, has been the play of former high school teammates Kerry Young and Macy Miller. Young is a year older, but Miller is more famous, according to Young. Here's David Brown with more on the Colonel Kids from Mitchell. Freshman Macy Miller and sophomore Kerry Young, two Mitchell natives, two SDSU Jackrabbits, and two current uniform numbers that add up to 22. But to really tell the tale of these two, is to understand how they felt last season when they weren't together. Not playing with her last year was uh, really different because we played with each other since we were little growing up on traveling teams in third grade and so you know she's always been there on my team and so not playing with her last year was different definitely. It was weird at first just going out there and not having carry on my team and you know another playmaker but it was nice to think like next year I was gonna be able to play with her again and I, I was excited. The familiarity with Carrie allowed Macy to focus on her senior year at Mitchell, knowing someone would be there to tell her all she needed to know about SDSU. It was comforting knowing she was here because being a freshman, you're scared coming in and you know, a new coach and just having her here that she was here the year before me and she knew what was like how practice went and I was always asking her questions about if it was hard or you know, if AJ yelled at her and she was gave me the details. She adjusted, I adjusted, but having her back is definitely a plus and something I always look forward to playing with her. The 2013-14 season was a one-year gap in the decade-long companionship on the court. But once Macy hit the floor in Brookings, it was like no time had even gone by. I feel like it came back naturally, just 
being on the court together, we can always find each other. And, you know, it's just great to have her on the team because she welcomed me in. I think we're back to normal the day we stepped on the floor back together. I think, you know, we just play together so well and we just always know what each other does. So I think there is no, like, time off or we just hit it right back when we came teammates again. The bond between the two is now stronger than ever as they help each other and their school reach the next level. I feel like I've adjusted well. Um, you know, right away I felt like I was small and I wasn't going to be able to fit in. But now it's just, I don't know, I feel like I fit in and um, being a leader on the court. Just having two Mitchell natives on the floor, just, you know, I think it's special to both of us. And, you know, it's fun to play with each other um, in high school and now at a collegiate level where we can, you know, continue to get better together and help uh, just make SDSU the best there is. Up next, another young Jackrabbit making a name for herself, Ellie Thompson. In the Rabbit Fire interview, find out which movie made her cry this week. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com. Welcome back. If you've ever wondered what restaurant in Chaska, Minnesota has the best Dr. Pepper, we've got you covered. Here is Ellie Thompson in the Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. Why are you number 45? Um, my role model um, when I was a kid was also number 45. She was a senior at Chaska when I was a freshman. So. What was her name? Or when I was an eighth grader. Ellen Degler. She plays at SMSU right now. And so you, did you just look to her as a role model and you wanted to emulate her? Yes, definitely. She was always the one that was getting the team pumped up and she was a beast on the boards and I just looked up and watched her every day and just wanted to be exactly like her. What is the best nickname you've ever had? Um, right now everyone's calling, well not everyone, a lot of people call me E.T. just because that's my initials but I like that nickname. Do they call you Alien too or anything like that? <laughs> no, no, just E.T. What is your favorite part of your hometown, Chaska, Minnesota? Ooh. Um, we have a Qdoba there, and the Qdoba has really good Dr. Pepper. Best Dr. Pepper I've ever tasted. That is the best part of Chaska. <laughs> That's the boy. best part. <laughs> a specific drink at a specific restaurant. I love Dr. Pepper. <laughs> okay then, well what's your favorite part of Brookings then? Um, just our fans. Our fans are great and I don't think it would be the same without them. Target or Walmart? Target. You're from Minnesota, of course you say yes. Target. What is your biggest pet peeve? When people rub their hands on their jeans. People do it all the time, like during tests and stuff and I cannot... It's, I don't know why, but it's just the worst thing ever. Is it the sound? Is it like styrofoam or something? Yeah, the sound's awful. Never heard that one before. Yeah. <laughs> what is the last movie you cried at? The Notebook yesterday. <laughs> you watched The Notebook yesterday? I did. <laughs> I did. That's the saddest movie ever. Was it because it was Valentine's weekend? Um, No, I just decided to watch it. and Just like when the Allie and Noah both like died together, it's so sweet. <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure song? One of those embarrassing songs that you're maybe afraid to admit that you listen to and just shout at the top of your lungs? Um, jump on it. <laughs> I have to listen to it before every game. Oh, so it's a pregame superstition it ritual? Is. Yes. In your short time here, what's your favorite AJ moment? You've heard from a lot of people that he just stomps his feet really funny. He does. He, Whenever he's on the sideline, you know you messed up when AJ stomps his foot. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, who would win a horse contest between you and your teammates? Me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, probably Macy. And why I Macy? Say. I think that she's just consistent from everywhere. Like, she can hit close in shots, she can hit really far shots. It doesn't matter. Macy's going to knock it down. All right, you're off the hot seat. All right, thank you. When we come back, a look at the week ahead for the Jackrabbits and why Scott Nagy does not want your theory or anybody else's on what is going to happen in the rest of the regular season. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Billionado.com.
Well, the Jackrabbit men play at Western Illinois on Wednesday night. The Jacks go into that game tied with North Dakota State for first place in the Summit League. Don't even mention it, though, to Coach Nagy right now. People talking about tiebreakers, this, that, and the other. I mean, I, I don't want to hear our players or anybody else talking about it. I'm not going to think about it. I mean, we, we have to get ready for Western Illinois. Uh, they're capable of beating anybody in the league just like us, and uh, that, that's all there is to it. We, we just have to get ready to play good basketball. Last two games for SDSU are at home this Saturday against Oral Roberts and then at South Dakota on February 28th. If they end up in a tie with North Dakota State, we will talk about tiebreakers then. The Jackrabbit women play at Omaha on Wednesday. The Mavs have the Summit League Player of the Week in Michaela Shaw, who had 38 points at North Dakota State last week. I just think she's probably one of the best forward players in the league. There's some other really good ones, but she's one of the best. She's only a sophomore. Now they're just running so much through her. She was a good player, I think, freshman and then early this year. But now they've said, hey, listen, we're going we're gonna to really make her uh, a standout. And she's awful good. She can shoot the ball well. She can post up. Really good knack at getting to the basket. Usually you get forwards who can do one of those things, but she does all of those three things. She, she posts, she shoots it, and she puts it on the floor. So she's a tough matchup for everybody in the league. Well, Shaw is averaging 26 points a game in the last six. Omaha, though, is just 3-10 and 10 in the Summit League so far. The Jacks are two games behind South Dakota as we speak. And again, we have the SDSU-USD women's game live on Midco Sports Network coming up this Saturday. It's at 4.30, and that'll be followed by the men. It's a doubleheader. The men taking on Oral Roberts at 7 o'clock, both games here on Midco Sports Network. We'll see you next week on Jackrabbit Journal.